Okay, I'm going to describe work OR, and I think I might describe neurocomputational um, or computational theory uh, uh, model of mind um, uh, stuff as well. But I'm going to describe work OR. I think I'm going to do three videos. Then I'm going to add graphics later and repost versions with graphics. I might edit them together. And this is like a raw um, video for for that project. So. This one will be just uploaded, no, no particular graphics. Um, all right, so the, so the things I'd be going over in these three videos are uh, Roger Penrose and, uh, and his theories, uh, and uh, Stuart Hameroff and what he was doing before, uh, what both of them were doing before Orc OR, and then, um, uh, and then orchestrated objective reduction itself. All right, so first, Roger Penrose. Now, Roger Penrose is a, um, a mathematical physicist, a modeler type. He worked with Stephen Hawking, and he has an interesting specialty, a particularly difficult, um, like makes rocket science look like child's play, of uh, dealing with quantum gravity. Okay, this is a sort of a, a, well, it's a one approach to trying to combine um, QM and the theory of relativity, and it really hasn't been like <clears throat> there's not really a theoretical uh, model that uni unifies them. They sort of brute force mathematics um, to do various interesting things. He and, and Hawking, though, to, you know, proving the black holes to radiate and all kinds of things. Now, the interesting thing about uh, quantum gravitation. Uh, is it leads um, it leads to Pen the Penrose interpretation. So we have the Copenhagen uh, interpretation, and there's um, what's the other many worlds one. Anyway, and Penrose has his own. That's that's a, a type of objective collapse. In other words, the many worlds version says that what happens is you have this distributed phenomena, this so-called coherent. Uh, particle or set of particles that I was saying is like a bubble or distributed out like a sheet or a bubble or something and that it always stays in that mode it's just that parts of the bubble lose contact with other parts they don't interact anymore that's what decoherence means they don't correlate and uh, and so you just get out of reach of those things well Penrose's idea is more like the Copenhagen which th says there's a reason that it settles on one state. So this coherent thing does become decoherent, right? Now his theory is that the curvature of space-time, and this is why it's important that it's quantum gravity because he's bringing in relativity. His theory is that if the curvature of space-time over the range of the uh, coherent system of particles, the, the coherent quantum states, the superposition state, if the curvature of space-time becomes too much, then it'll decohere. And so this has created a theory for him of really why, and actually put some physical reality on the difference between the macroscope and the microscope, or the nanoscope. Now another really interesting thing about this is that it's led to some theories about um, a, a, a that involve a thing called the Planck mass. Now we know all, all about the Planck's constant, which is the smallest unit of energy, and there's a, a related thing. You can use that to figure out the Planck time scale, the tiniest little, and it's super tiny, and the Planck, you know, distance, and it's super tiny, and you know, like the distance that, that a, a, you know, photon moves, um, and a Planck time unit, and you just, you expand this out. Well, the Planck mass is the amount of mass it takes to have a black hole that has an event horizon that's the Planck distance. And this is actually a macroscopic, barely macroscopic phenomenon. It's about the size of a dust particle or a, a flea egg. So we had some theories about this, right? And this has nothing to do with consciousness. I'm not going to talk about any of the consciousness stuff. This is his... Uh, you know, the kind of stuff he won the Wolf Prize with Hawking's for. So, um, yeah, it's a very uh, interesting theory. And so he has some experiments to test this stuff. Basically, 
and he says his theory will say that this tiny dust particle is actually at the edge of the quantum it's the most macroscopic of these quantum phenomena and that a particle like this can actually remain in a superposition for as long as a second so this means we can measure this we could see this effect and consider it a macroscopic effect okay I'm not gonna get into where you know in his late 50s he came out with this idea that maybe it has to do with um, cognition um, this is just him putting relativity and uh, quantum theory together and really the beauty of a black hole is it's a, it's a macroscopic surreal macroscopic phenomena a lot of the mathematics of it uh, gravitational stuff is relativistic of course and yet um, particles are going to be falling into it you're going to have quantum interactions and um, it's at this threshold that he he's done a sort of a somewhat unique I'm sure there's lots of people following up on it but he was particularly um, particularly um, you know, a particular genius and he's currently a professor emeritus at um, Oxford and um, so I suggest looking up the Penrose interpretation look up Roger Penrose himself um, look up quantum gravity and um, so that's